When I first met my wife's family, I couldn't help but notice the magnetized post-it note in the refrigerator. It was a checklist. MBA, check. BMW, check. Condo in Florida, check. You know, really the poor are not the only ones shackled. The, the wealthy are shackled also with all kinds of expectations about what they're supposed to do and achieve and make happen and all that stuff. Now, my father-in-law is not this kind of guy really. He really was a guy who believed in small businesses as an avenue for job creation and he took care of his employees like a family. It's pretty amazing at that. In fact, I know that he gave his money generously away all the time. I don't know all that went on because he kept that basically the right hand, didn't know what the left hand was doing, but I know he constantly gave money from all the wealth that God provided him with. He was a guy who believed in this principle of business uh, to create hope and dignity in the world. You know, if you think about it, there's kind of a, there's kind of a thing in our Christian culture where we sort of, I don't know, downplay wealth, downplay businessmen. Somehow we've created this idea that, that wealth is evil, but what if God actually makes certain people wealthy so they can actually restore hope and dignity to the world, so they can actually get involved in people's lives in such a way that they create jobs for them to actually make money for their families. My father-in-law was a guy who understood this. He got this. He understood that his job was to bring hope and dignity to people. Uh, another way of saying, he wanted to change the world. Are you a person with these kind of skills? Are you a person with a lot of money? Uh, maybe you should follow my father-in-law's example. Uh, you know, you may have your MBA, you may have your condo in Florida, you may have your BMW, but what's God asking you to do with your resources, with your business skills, to help other people actually be able to provide simply for their families every day?